So, what I'm going to do briefly is try and answer the question that you can see behind me, right? Can we have a sustainable oil industry, particularly when we're dealing with the threat of dangerous climate change? And I think this is a question that anyone who works with the oil industry who's interested in oil and gas production needs to have a clear answer to. And it's certainly a question now increasingly that many of my students are asking. So what can we do? Is it indeed possible for there to be a future for the oil industry? So I'm gonna share some of my thoughts on this subject and I'm gonna share it by uh, putting up some slides. So here you see the title, the elephant in the room. I mean, that is the elephant in the room when we're discussing the oil industry and climate change. But let's start with some of the things that uh, some leading activists have already mentioned. Okay, this is Naomi Klein, Klein, a leading Canadian social activist. She published a book in 2016, This Changes Everything. Basically, an appreciation that the threat of climate change is possibly one of the most important things that we need to consider seriously this century. Second here is a British environmental environmentalist who actually says when we're looking at this problem, um, engaging with oil companies is futile. Where does this come from? The UN Framework on Climate Change 2015, COP21, had an aspiration to keep the world's temperature to within one and a half degrees of what it has been historically. We're already witnessing an increase in warming of about one degrees with widespread forest fires, extreme weather events. We certainly do not want this to be any worse. And it's absolutely incompatible with the continued unabated production and use of fossil fuels at anything like the current level. So let's put some numbers, let's have a graph. This is from the IPC special report on how to limit global warming to one and a half degrees. Our current emissions are about 37 gigatons per year. And you see my red arrow here, the trend is actually upwards. If we're going to prevent dangerous climate change, we need to move to zero under different scenarios by about 2050. And you can see many of these scenarios actually CO2 emissions go negative, okay? So there are really two options here. We essentially have to close down the fossil fuel industry because it's the burning of fossil fuels that's leading to these uh, CO2 emissions. Essentially have to close down the fossil fuel industry as soon as possible. Right, that's option one. And option two, or and or, is to actually deal with the carbon dioxide that's being produced. Well, let's see the scale of the challenge. You know, maybe we're going to run out of fossil fuels anyway, and so this uh, problem goes away. The answer is no. Here is essentially the CO2 emissions that would be released if we burnt the fossil fuels that we know. Okay, and what's showing here is the reserves, what we really know we have, and these are potential reserves, right? We don't know for sure that we have that CO2. More or less, if we're going to limit global warming to around one and a half degrees, we have about a thousand gigatons or less. This is actually for two degrees, so it's going to be even more severe for one and a half degrees. And you can see that our current reserves of oil and gas get us there. If we have coal, we're well beyond it. So we can, within our allowance, continue to burn some oil and gas, but not all the oil and gas we have underground and basically none of the coal. So let's have a look at some other comments. This is from Oil Change International. So why on earth is the oil and gas industry spending in excess of $150 billion each year looking for new oil and gas when we know that we can't even burn what we have at the moment? In universities, here's Stanford University, they have divested uh, from coal, the movement towards divesting from fossil fuels. And you might say, okay, well, that's, you know, California. Um, it's no different in Britain. One of the first universities to divest from fossil fuels was King's College London. That's four years ago. 
When we get to 2020, so the beginning of this year, half of UK universities had committed to divest from fossil fuels. The most recent, this is just uh, last week, it's Cambridge University. Here is a protest against the use of uh, fossil fuels. Cambridge University has committed to divest from fossil fuels by 2030. Then you might be saying, well, what about Imperial? Well, what I show here is a picture from a sit-in protest. This was the week before Imperial went into lockdown because of COVID. But the week before students had taken over the main entrance to Imperial College, this is our statue of Queen Victoria, as you can see, um, has been augmented. It's like tobacco funding health research, should universities take money uh, from fossil fuel burning companies. Okay. Imperial did introduce a, an investment strategy that was announced in March which was to divest from coal and tar sand extraction, but not a complete divestment and certainly not a complete disengagement from the fossil fuel industry, particularly oil and gas. But what are the oil industry doing? Are they just, you know, hoping for the best? Well, climate change isn't going to go away. So BP is one of a number of companies that have made commitments to be net zero. And the idea is we have to be net zero in, in terms of our CO2 emissions by 2050. When you can read what's on the slide, now there comes a question, just so, hang on. The oil and gas industry produces oil and gas, that's what they do. And when you burn that oil and gas, which is what happens, you produce CO2. So how can you be net zero? Okay, so how, how can you do it? Well, the way in which you do it is through what's called carbon capture and storage. And here is an example of a carbon capture storage project, the Sleipner project, that has been ongoing offshore Norway since 1996. Now, in this particular case, you have a natural gas field. The natural gas actually contains CO2 mixed in with it. You can't sell that natural gas with CO2, so you have to separate out the CO2. And the, the methods for doing this have been around since the 1930s. So you separate out the CO2. Normally what you do is you just release that CO2 to the atmosphere, sell the gas, <clears throat> made some money. But if you're dealing with climate change, you shouldn't do that. So you've separated out the CO2 and you inject the CO2 back underground, in this case, into a sand formation about 800 meters deep. So the CO2 is contained in the pore space. We can do exactly the same on a global scale. There is plenty of storage capacity deep underground, particularly underneath the North Sea, where CO2 can be stored. And the idea is that at large point sources, refineries, other heavy industry, fossil fuel burning power stations, where the CO2 is burnt, instead of being released to the atmosphere, separated out and injected back underground. And you can also do this in a carbon neutral or even carbon negative way, if you were to burn biomass, Okay, so that's carbon neutral, but you collect the CO2 and put that underground, you're actually storing CO2, you're effectively taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. So we do this at large scale, and to have a license to operate, anyone that sells CO2 would have to commit to put an equal amount underground. And that's how you do it, not by planting trees or other things, as we know, with widespread forest fires globally, the idea that we're going to plant trees and that's going to offset the CO2, that's not going to work. No, we're going to put it underground and we can put it down safely. So is this some wacky idea that just some petroleum engineer has thought up? No. Um, here is per all respectable assessments of how we are going to get to net zero. Appreciate that the societal and economic impacts of simply stopping the production of fossil fuels, particularly oil and gas, are catastrophic. Our society would collapse within a week without oil and gas. It's intrinsic in virtually everything. Anything, anything used for transport, manufacture, you name it, involves fossil fuels. 
And so what we need to do is clearly reduce our dependence on fossil fuels, transform our economy, but in the meantime, we're still burning them and we need to deal with that. So here's an assessment of carbon capture and storage. Against time, we're in 2020, so there are only a few projects. But if we notice by the end of the century, the amount that we're storing per year, we're looking at up to 30 gigatons. That's the same amount as the CO2 we currently produce. So this is carbon capture and storage at a huge scale. It creates an industry in terms of the volumes of oil and gas, of uh, uh, fluid stored that's equal to the volumes of oil and gas we currently produce. And of course that makes sense. The engineering skills, the understanding associated with something at this scale are the same skills that are used for managing oil and gas recovery. They involve transport of fluids, they involve drilling wells, they involve understanding what's happening in the subsurface deep in porous rock. So as someone who's studying petroleum engineering, those skills are still valuable. Oil and gas are extremely valuable products that continue to fuel and run our society and allow many of us to enjoy unprecedented, historically unprecedented amounts of prosperity. But if we're going to do this while preventing dangerous climate change, we're going to have to match the oil and gas we produce with putting CO2 underground and the same skills can be applied to do that. So a carbon neutral strategy for the oil industry. It needs to commit to be CO2 neutral by 2050. Many companies are doing that, but they have to then do it properly, which means is to store the same amount of CO2 underground as is produced in all aspects of their operations. And not just to sit around, you know, with pretty pictures and lots of green in the background, but actually to lobby governments to make this happen, as opposed to lobbying governments to make sure it doesn't happen, okay, while informing and engaging with the public. And that commitment can be on a sliding scale. So it's not we're going to do everything today, but we could start today by storing some percentage of the CO2 produced, and then that has to rise to 100% by 2050. If the Western, the independent oil companies don't do this, there is a real risk that they will lose their license to operate. And that won't solve the problem for climate change because fossil fuels will continue to be burnt around the world without any of these constraints. So any far-sighted producer of fossil fuels really has to seriously engage with this. So I'll stop there. These are my own personal views about how the oil industry can continue to contribute as it does at the moment to our economy while seriously addressing the threat of climate change. And that has to be every molecule of CO2 that goes into the atmosphere as a result of burning your products has to be matched by putting at least a molecule of CO2 stored safely deep underground. Thank you very much.